Hello children. Today we will be learning geography class 6 chapter 6 importance of oceans. Let's begin. The importance of oceans. The table has the ocean name and its area in square kilometers. The hydrosphere includes all the water bodies that exist on the earth. This covers all the oceans, seas, rivers and their tributaries, lakes, reservoirs and also ground water. Of the total global waters, 97.7% is contained in oceans. Take some water in a steel dish as shown in figure 6.2. It is better if the water is from a bore well. Keep the water in direct sunlight. Do not move the dish until all the water gets evaporated. Observe the dish after the water has evaporated completely. What do you see? Taste the substance in the dish. You must have noticed that after the water evaporated completely, a whitish layer is left in the dish. If you taste it, you will find that it is salty. you will realize that these are the salts in the water in drinking water the proportion of salts is quite low water from oceans and seas has a great amount of salt hence it tastes salty volcanic eruptions occur on land similar volcanic eruptions take place in the oceans as well see figure 6.3 During volcanic eruptions different minerals ashes salts and gases are added to the water this increases the level of salts and minerals in ocean water due to the continuous evaporation of oceanic waters the proportion of salts increases all these things make the ocean water salty The salinity of ocean water is different at different places. Salinity is expressed in terms of mils, particles per thousand. The average salinity of oceanic waters is 35 mils. The Dead Sea is known to have the maximum salinity. Its salinity is 332 particles per thousand we obtain salt from the salty waters salt as a substance is obtained by constructing salt pans in the coastal areas see figure 6.4 salt is an item in our diet many minerals like phosphates sulfates iodine etc are also obtained from the sea we depend on oceans to some extent for minerals Many of us include fish in our diet. We get fish from rivers, lakes and seas. The proportion of fish in seas is much greater than those or in rivers and lakes. Catching marine animals is a large scale activity the world over. It is one of the ancient occupations of human beings. Though food is the major purpose of this activity, marine animals are also used for production of fertilizers, pharmaceuticals and also in research. In India, people mainly consume prawns, kolumbi, clams, tisri, crabs, seafish, surmai, mackerel, bangra, pomfret, paplet, Indian shark, mori, Indian salmon, ravas etc many other types of marine animals are consumed in different parts of the world the life of people from countries that have a coastline largely depends on the sea especially if there are few other occupations seychelles mauritius maldives etc are some of these The above table records the maximum and minimum temperatures of some places located between 30 degrees and 40 degrees north parallels. Study the table and do as directed. Calculate the difference between the mean maximum 
and minimum temperatures and write it in the last column. Highlight the rows for the places having a range of temperature over 10 degrees Celsius with red color. Color other rows in blue. Find the locations of these places from an atlas. Which places are closer to the oceans? Tell whether the range of temperature at these places is less or more. What might be the main reason leading to differences in the temperature range of different places? In which thermal zone are all of these places located? Which places are far away from the oceans? Do those places have greater or smaller temperature range? Mention the places having the smallest and greatest temperature ranges. Draw a graph for the above data. Use a proper color scheme. Now you need to look at the table and answer the questions given below. First of all, you have to do calculate the difference between the mean maximum and mean temperatures and write it in the last column and then solve the rest of the questions. You must have realized from the above activity that there are differences in the temperature of different places on the earth. Similarly, there is difference in the maximum and minimum temperatures. This difference is less in the coastal regions nearness to the sea, while it is more in the regions far away from the sea, continentality. This means that in regions close to the oceans, seas or large reservoirs, there is not much of a difference in the temperature throughout the day. The main reason for this is the mixing of vapor released through evaporation of water from these water bodies into air. This vapor in the air absorbs and stores the heat released from the land. Hence, the temperature in coastal areas remains equable. You have studied that the equatorial region receives near perpendicular sun rays. As a result, these areas get more heat whereas the polar regions receive high slant rays. This differential heating creates imbalance in the temperature of air in different parts. This leads to formation of belts of high and low pressure on the earth. Winds blow due to the pressure differences in these belts. These winds are called planetary winds. These winds move from the oceanic water in the form of currents. These currents are warm currents or cold currents. Warm currents move towards cold regions and cold currents move towards warm regions. This means ocean currents move from the equatorial region to the polar region and from polar regions to the equatorial region. This leads to the redistribution of heat on the earth. The cold currents moving towards the equatorial regions make the temperature of coastal areas in that zone milder, whereas the warm currents coming in the colder regions causes temperatures in coastal areas to rise. We can see this in figure 5.6. We have seen earlier that we obtain salt, fish, shells and other products from the ocean. Besides these, we get minerals like iron, lead, cobalt, sodium, manganese, chromium, zinc, etc. from the ocean floor. We also get mineral oil and natural gas. We get precious items like pearls, corals and ornamental items like shells, as also medicinal plants from the seas. Oceanic transport. Oceans have provided us the most economic option of transportation. Large-scale transport of goods is carried out with the help of ships, trawlers, boats, etc. Figure 6.8 International trade is carried out on a large scale using waterways. Countries like Spain, Norway, Japan have a good coastline. Due to goods transport by ocean routes, these countries have gained importance. 
water transport is conducted on a much higher scale as compared to other modes of transport. Hence, for transport of bulky materials like coal, crude oil, raw materials, metallic minerals, food grains, etc., water transport is given preference. But there are issues related to oceans. What are these issues? Population of oceanic waters is a major and serious issue that has developed in recent times. Oil spills. Refer figure 6.9. Releasing the waste produced in the coastal cities into the seas. Materials thrown out from the ships. Exploitative fishing, cutting of mangrove forests in the coastal areas, disaster caused by the water mines, sewage released by industries and cities, excavations carried out in the seas. All the things listed above lead to large-scale pollution of oceanic waters. Some coastal regions are providing, proving to be death traps for aquatic animals. As a result, many aquatic animals are under the threat of being extinct. Example, the blue whale, some type of sea turtles, dolphins, etc. Thank you children. That's all for today. Please make sure you watch the video over and over again. Try and read the textbook if you can. And please feel free to ask any questions you may have.